Welcome back to Taival Outdoors and the first episode of this cold weather clothing and layering video series. In this video we are of course going to be talking about base layers and this episode is brought to you by 511 Tactical Finland who very generously donated two different pairs of their base layers for me to test out and review and that's what we're going to talk today because they are made of synthetic and merino wool material so let's compare those two popular choices. And also if you live in Finland 511 Tactical has a discount code for you all that is usable until the end of March this year. The code is down below also in the pinned comment so feel free to take that code and use it to get, get a bit of a discount from their store. Now let's get down to business so base layers. The job of these base layers regardless of the material that they are made of is always the same. It's not so much about giving you insulation or providing a lot of warmth but they need to be effective at transferring your sweat and moisture away from your body so to the outside layers and hopefully eventually then uh, away from your clothes all in all. Besides the material of the base layer a couple of things to look for are of course I highly encourage you to get some type of layer with thumb holes. These are very very good to have in my opinion either as base layer or mid layer option to cover your palms and wrists especially. Wrists are a bit hard place to keep warm at times if you have very short gloves and perhaps even short leaves or standard leaves for that matter. They can get snow and cold air in between quite easily so Having some type of thumb hole is always a plus in my books. Some other things, flat seams and a kind of a raglan cut, I believe it's called, when the seam doesn't go on top of your shoulder, so instead it goes behind and in front. That means that when you're wearing a backpack, for example, it doesn't rub uh, against the one seam that's sitting there on top where the highest friction would be. But then let's talk about this base layer in particular. So this is 511 Tactical Tropos brand new for this winter season. This is made out of 100% polyester graphene blend. The purpose of the graphene is to provide additional or improved thermal regulation compared to polyester alone and also it does have some antimicrobial properties so it tries to mimic the same kind of benefits I would say that merino wool has in it inherently. But we'll talk about merino wool in just a second. Other features that I like besides the basics that should be on your base layer regardless of the material is that these actually have small pockets and while at first it seemed kind of silly but then I realized that when I go to the sleeping bag I need to stash my phone somewhere so this is an ex excellent pocket to stash your phone during the night to keep it warm so the battery doesn't drain and also the phone then doesn't roll around uh, who knows where inside the sleeping bag. As far as I can tell based on my testing I guess the graphene does help. This hasn't started to stink at any point. It's still not merino wool so you need to wash it every now and then of course but it is not the same thing as your basic synthetic um, base layers where let's say even just 10 years ago so they have also gone a long way although there has been a lot of hype in this outdoor industry about merino wool and its benefits I think uh, synthetic still has its place and synthetic materials tend to also be a bit more flexible than just merino wool which means that you can perhaps easier get yourself a bit more tight fitting base layer because it should be tight fitting in order to function properly. If you have very loose base layer then it starts to not function properly and cannot transfer that moisture as effectively away from your body. So get something that is a bit of a slim fit I guess, form fitting at least. For example I went with size large uh, these long johns but then size medium on torso and still as you can see the sleeves are plenty long so better to have it a bit tight fitting than to have it loose, although loose might look cool, especially if you are not super fit, but I encourage you to get as tight as you feel okay wearing at least by yourself. But now let's jump to the other base layer which is made of merino wool blend. 
All right, then next, this is 511 Tactical Range Ready Merino Wool Set. So it has, of course, basic long sleeve as well as these tights or long johns. And these are made of 81% merino wool, 12% nylon, 7% elastine. 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 Hmm. Whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> Again, flat seams, good cut, pretty similar in that sense. These tights don't have the small pockets and generally speaking also of course since it is lacking the thumb holes the sleeves are a bit shorter and it doesn't fit quite as snugly as the Tropos set does and that is exactly what I was just talking about but still not super loose either. But try to always go for something that's quite form-fitting. Now it is very very thin in fact you can see through the fabric if you spread it out a bit because it is supposed to be a base layer. People think that when it's merino wool, it's some kind of miracle material that you can get away with wearing just this and a jacket, and that's not the case. Sure, it does retain some of its insulation value when wet, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily transfer that moisture as effectively as a synthetic base layer and it might take longer to dry. It depends always a bit what kind of fabric weave is used and, and, and so forth, how thick and heavy the fabric is. I like to keep my base layers as thin as possible because that then gives me more flexibility when it comes to the next set of layer and layers after that. So this is not for insulation. I know some people like to wear quite heavy and, and, and thick base layers because they think it's, um, well, it is less effort to have just one thicker layer, but if you're active and moving and then stopping for a lunch break or something like that and doing whatever where you go and stop, go and stop, then in my opinion, it's better to go with light weight base layer and then adjust the other layers as needed instead of trying to find kind of one-size-fits-all solution. But anyway, back to this and merino wool perhaps in general. Don't get me wrong, merino wool is an excellent, excellent material, but it is not a miracle material either. So you need to know what its strengths and weaknesses are. And as you heard, this is what 81% merino wool, because merino wool alone is not super durable. And that is a major downside, of course. And merino wool can get very expensive as well. So if you're on a tight budget, I think you might be relieved to know that you can get quite good base layer as well that are made out of synthetic materials, or at least get something that is a blend between merino and synthetic. My favorite thing about merino wool has to be its antimicrobial properties, which means that it doesn't smell at least that bad, at least that quickly as some synthetic uh, base layers or other synthetic clothes might do. And I've throughoutly tested this uh, a couple of years ago. I did seven day backpacking trip wearing the same merino wool t-shirt throughout those seven days. And after the trip, it still didn't smell that bad. It frankly it smelled at all. And you can pretty much just end of the day, hang your merino wool clothing to dry somewhere. Um, if you are sleeping in a tent, of course, it might be difficult to get full base layer set inside the tent to hang somewhere if you want to let it air out a bit and so forth. But generally speaking, if I would go for a long trip, I would prefer to have merino wool as base layer just because of that no smell and no microbial growth in it, at least not as much as in some uh, other fabrics might have. But if you're just out for an overnight trip or weekend trip or whatnot, I don't think you are going to see a difference between merino wool and a good synthetic base layers, at least in terms of that uh, smell factor. Anyway, I think that covers all the basics of your first layer. So remember, the job of the first layer is not to keep you super warm. The job of it is to transfer sweat and moisture away from your body. And hopefully you should feel dry or at least relatively dry, no matter the activity levels that you are engaging in. Secondly, get something that is fairly tight fitting or at least form fitting, perhaps that's a better word, so that the base layer can do its job properly. 
Thirdly, merino wool is a great material, but don't get fooled by the marketing hype. It's still not a miracle material. Synthetic materials definitely have their pros in them as well, and the merino wool does have a couple of cons in it too. So do your research and figure out what kind of material is the best for your use case. And perhaps finally, you can get away with lighter weight material in base layers than you probably think. It is perfectly okay for me to be today out here filming. Actually quite good weather for that, although it is snowing all the time. But it's roughly between minus two and maybe plus one today, somewhere around there. It's snowing all the time. Not a lot of wind as I'm behind this tree now, so I can get away with wearing just base layer. And then I had a wind anorak on top of this. And while I had the backpack on and was stretching through the snow, I didn't feel cold at all. So thin base layer, as long as it does its job, you know, you can get away with it. And it also gives you more flexibility when you're starting to add layers on top of it. So don't go too heavy too soon, I guess. <laughs> But anyway, let's move on to the episode two of this series, covering the basics of the mid layer or your main insulation layer. See you there.